Grade 6 math number 9.10b. This is a part 2. There was an A. And we're solving operations and we're using brackets, braces, and properties. So we talked about our order of operations and how important they are. So now we've added brackets and braces to our order of operations. We do those first, then we do exponents, and whatever the brackets and braces have inside of them, we do the exponents multiply, divide, add, and subtract, okay? And I'll show you what I'm talking about. So, as I said in the last video, we learned how important it is to use the order of operations, and there's rules for evaluating expressions. Expressions are algebraic, they're like equations with a variable, except an equation has an equal sign, an expression doesn't, okay? So it's, mm, okay. Anyway, there's a combination of several operations plus, minus, multiply, divide. We've got our parentheses, our brackets, and now these little funny squiggly things are braces, okay? Well, when we have all these things in an expression, it could be very, you know, confusing. So what we do is we follow the order of operations and it helps us out. It helps us break it down into smaller pieces so it's easier to solve, okay? So when we see something like this, wow, is that a lot of algebra there, huh? But you know what? This is so easy. What we're going to do is our parentheses first that are inside the brackets. So we know what 5 times negative 2 is and 2 times negative 1. Those are baby. Those are easy, right? 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. And 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. That's easy. Well, now there's this 4 over here. See that sneaky 4? We have to multiply this 4 to that negative 10 before we can add because that's still a multiply. Remember when a number is next to a parentheses or a bracket, that means we have to multiply. All right, so 4 times negative 10 is negative 40. We add this negative 40 to that negative 2, and we get negative 42. Well, so that means all of this inside of here, inside these braces, was negative 42. So now, all of the things inside the braces is equal to negative 6x, and we've got to solve for x. Negative 42 is equal to 6, negative 6 times something. Well, if this is a negative and the answer is a negative, the only way to get a negative answer is to have unlike signs. So that means whatever x is, it's positive. Well, 6 times what is 42? 6 times 7. And the 7 has to be positive. So we know the x equals 7. See? So what we did was we worked inside the brackets. We multiplied. We multiplied outside the brackets. We added, we worked inside the braces, we worked outside the braces, and we solved for x, okay? If you're having any trouble with order of operations, go back to video number 1.4 in my grade 6 math videos, and it'll explain it further. And it'll give you some good examples of what happens when you use it and when you don't use it on the same problem, all right? So now, here's what I wanted to show you. We can use the commutative, associative, and distributive properties to help us evaluate these algebraic expressions. All right, so recap. Commutative is when it's the same commute backwards and forwards. If you've ever watched my videos on properties, if it's two times three distance to get to school, then when you're at school and you want to go home, it's three times two. You're going the other direction, and it doesn't matter. It's the same distance to school or from school, right? And that's your commute to school or to work. So it's the same distance there and back. Associative is who you're hanging out with. Who's your associates? Are you, is the 2 by itself while the 3 and 5 hang out? Or is the 5 by itself while the 2 and 3 hang out? So associative is a grouping property, okay? Who are you grouping together? It doesn't matter because it's all multiplication. They're all going to get multiplied together. Distributive says that you can distribute this 2 to the 3 and to the 5 and add them together. See? All right, so here's the commutative. We use the commutative property to change the order of the numbers. We've got a 15 plus, and then we've got inside brackets, 8 plus a negative 15. So we have to do inside the brackets first normally, right? Oh, but we can use the commutative property to change the order of these. We could put the 15 over here and the 8 over here because it's all addition. See? If there was multiplication and division in here, we wouldn't have been able to change the order so easily. But because they're all addition, it doesn't matter which one we add up first. See? So we move the 15 over here and the 8 over there, and now look, we've got a plus 15 and a minus 15. 
Well, those are zero pairs. They cancel each other out. That's zero. What's well, zero plus eight? Eight. Oh, my gosh. And just remember it worked because it was all addition in the operation. Okay? So we used commutative and associative. Well, now we can use distributive also. If you remember my videos on distributive, we have a parentheses nest. See? And the outside number is like the mother bird feeding her baby birds, and she gives each one a turn. All right? See? It's our parentheses nest. You go 2 times 3, and you add it to 2 times 4. See? All right, so with the distributive, we can break this number apart, this 23. Instead of saying negative 7 times 23, we can make it easier on ourselves and say negative 7 times 20, which is easy, because it's just like negative 7 times 2 with a 0 added on the end. That would be 14 with a 0, 140. And then we add it to negative 7 plus 3, which is 21. So when we break it apart like this, it's we're using the distributive property, like our parentheses nest and our mother bird, see? We add them together and we get negative 161. That was easy. Who would have thought we would have been able to do negative 7 times 23 so quickly, see? All right, so the other thing I want you to know is that you're going to see in algebra these parentheses. Those are the black ones, of course, the brackets. Those are the boxy blue ones here, and the braces are the pink ones. Kind of kind of squiggly, funny lines, aren't they? But they're called braces, all right? Braces are also like suspenders, but these are braces. So think that these are like holding up the math problem, okay? Anyway, for the order of operations, the parentheses, that up here where it says parentheses, it also includes brackets and braces. So you would do anything inside of there before you would do anything outside of them. So if it says, if you have a parentheses and then a multiplication, well then do it. But if the multiplication is outside the bracket, make sure you did whatever was inside the parentheses first before you moved outside of it to the brackets. Make sure you do everything outside the brackets, or within the brackets, I'm sorry, before you do the braces part, what's outside the brackets. So let's look at this. All right, inside the parentheses, we've got 1 plus 3, and we know that's 4. Now, we did inside the parentheses, now we're going to do inside the brackets. That's 2 times the 4. That's 8. Now, we did everything inside the brackets, now we're going to move to the outside of the brackets, which is the braces. 4 times 8 is 32, see? And you just slowly move outward from deep inside, okay? They're just grouping symbols, it's no big deal. They're really easy. In fact, they make your life easier because you know which ones are grouped to which ones, okay? So, this is the end of the chapter, and we're going to start talking about equations and graphing next. So I want you to really remember that when you add unlike signs, you just subtract the lesser value and use the sign of the greater one. And to subtract unlike signs, we add the opposite. And then I want you to remember that when we multiply and divide in integers, the like signs make a positive answer, and the unlike signs make a negative answer, okay? All right, we got more to remember. I want you to remember that an in integer is a whole number and its opposites. No fractions or decimals allowed. It's a whole number and its opposites. That means it's all negative and positive numbers, okay? No fractions or decimals. Other than that, both sides of the number line, it's an integer, okay? I want you to remember that huge problems are really just a bunch of easy-to-solve little problems whether it's in math or it's in life. If you see this, this is really very easy. Look at 3 times 2 is 6, plus 4 times 1 is 4. Okay, 6 plus 4 is 10. And you add 5 times 3 is 15 to it. 10 plus 15 is 25. You take away 25, and it's really 0. So that whole thing was just 0. So just remember that, okay? The other thing I want you to remember before the next chapter is that the absolute value of a number is how far away it is from zero. If you see these two lines slanted like this, that means absolute value. And if you see a number inside of it, that just means they're asking you how far is it away from the zero on the number line. Negative 3 is 3 spaces away from zero. Negative 26 is 26 spaces away from zero. A positive 5 is 5 spaces away, okay? Absolute value. I also want you to remember, I know you... Are the people who watch every video are like, oh my gosh, she's doing additive inverse again. But yes, I am, because maybe someone didn't see it. The additive inverse of a number means it's opposite across the zero. The additive inverse for negative 1 is across 0, it's 1. 
For 2, it's negative 2. For negative 3, it's 3. For 4, it's negative 4. It's its opposite across 0. That's the additive inverse, okay? And you can also remember that 0 pairs cancel each other out, all right? So, hopefully, this has helped you for this chapter on integers, and now you're an integer pro. That would really make me proud. That would really make me happy, because that means I did a good job. So, keep working, keep trying, keep up the good work, and I'll see you in Chapter 10 when we start talking about equations and graphing. Bye.